Which is where I'm... Um, so you're living in Homa. What were you listening to at the time? Uh, Iron Maiden, a lot of thrash, the golden age of thrash, Heathen, you know, Testament, all their first things, you know, um, uh, Exodus, uh, Celtic Frost, Into the Pandemonium. Um, <laughs> I mean, that was the, the... And, you know, and also Jimi Hendrix, you know, that whole, like, his greatest hits mm -hmm. kind of thing. And um, The Doors and John Mellencamp, I think. Hey, John Mellencamp rules. Is it John Cougar or was yeah, it John yeah, Mellencamp? Well, oh, like yeah. scare Blood on the Scarecrow, man. You know? That's yeah. a great song. Right? Now, yeah. did, you you know, dis so did you discover this in Louisiana or is this what this you brought all, with you? No, this is, this is all stuff that I was... Well, I mean, I brought Iron Maiden with me. Right. And then, you know, I was into Slayer and everything when I was like 12. You know, I discovered this... You know, college radio station there in Indiana. When I was, you know, I'd stay up late and record, you know, on my cassette tape and record, like, you know, I heard Slayer doing Anagata Devita and, you know, uh, Bathory and just shit that kind of, you know, blew my mind yeah. you know, in a lot of ways. And, and so, I, I mean, at the so time, you, you know, but I was already, like, into, like, you know, Prince and Twisted Sister and Duran Duran and everything leading up to that, you know, that 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 I loved, you know. Was, and then Simon and Garfunkel was soon to follow, you know, like I was like, holy shit, you know. So, so, uh, so it was a little bit of everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Did you grow up with that whole, like, crossover experience, you know, like... Big me. time. Even when I moved to Louisiana, you know, being more of like a metal kid... I immediately ran into a bunch of punk kids who were like crass and like dead mm -hmm. Kennedys and so that was like immediately my second my second thing, you know. Are you drinking this? Uh let me finish it. Being <laughs> someone who's slightly you know, just slightly cool, older thanks. than you, like, you know I mean, I, I definitely can say like I can remember like, you know, those early metal years like, you know, you're coming out of like pop rock and all of a sudden you're like here's metal and then all of a sudden it was like well how brutal could metal be and then you're like maybe if we mix it with some like punk and all of a sudden you're like obituary DRI and, and you get like, obituary you know yeah obituary for sure I mean honestly like the big one for me was like Stormtroopers of Death like oh you know, yeah like, that's you I had my grandfather get that for me <laughs> my grandpa who was like 70 some years old I had when I was 12 years old I gave him a list of records one of them was like Wasp one of them was S.O.D one of them I think was Guns N' Roses one was I don't even remember maybe it was an Iron Maiden I don't know but or it could have been Metallica but, you know anyway it was something like that you know so he went there and got that you know speaking English or die <laughs> Oh, that, that album was like the game changer though in the 80s for a lot of people because like nothing like that like you know like you're like I was like in the wasp I was like listening to Maiden all of a sudden yeah when like, I bet I, 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 I met him he runs sound downtown in Austin and I met him it was like Billy weird Hawk. you know That's to crazy. meet him and like he's just running sound for bands there at the fucking headhunters, you know? <laughs> That's wow. crazy. Yeah, but he's a nice guy. 